So Brandon, here you um, here I attach what we call the core. It's the core 44 bar. Okay, it's solid aluminum, and I'm gonna I'm attach it to this cable machine. And the movement that we're gonna do, we call it we are we call it uh, overthrow. All right, but the idea is to strengthen the what we call the golf orbit. Okay, there's so many orbits that the, that the body can move. But this one in particular has a high carry over to the golf swing, okay? So I'm gonna hold the bar, like, you know, cartwheel stance, like so, okay? And look, notice my grip is monkey grip, okay? So it's not overhand like this, but it's monkey grip. Notice my, my stance, I'm uh, wider than shoulder width apart. I lower my center of mass so I can increase my personal support. Now, Rotation, as you all know, is the production of pulling and pushing, okay? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna pull with my right arm, push with my, uh, with my left, through, and, and all throughout this orbit movement, see? Like so, and notice that my shoulder, hip, and back foot pivot, okay? Rotation is not isolating Isolating your, your, your lower body from your upper body and do this. If you do that, you're, you will feel it immediately on your L4, L5. That's not fun. Okay? Your lower body, your, your, your lumbar area gets real, uh, we call it real angry. Okay? So again, watch how, how I perform the movement. So when I push and pull and push, shoulder, hip, back foot pivot, and we call it the cylindrical effect. Okay? Once again, I'm gonna pull, push simultaneously. And muscle tension is mostly in the oblique area of my left side. That's where you feel it the most, okay? And notice that the movement, notice the cable. The cable is going horizontally, but I'm rotating, okay? So that tension, that line of resistance is similar to the muscle fibers of your obliques. Mm -hmm. So I'm loading the body, I'm loading the body following the orientation of the muscle fibers of your obliques, okay? So we, we love efficiency. We, we just don't like to load. We like to load with purpose and direction. Okay. When you, when, you, uh, when you add load and direction to a movement, now we're talking vector or force vectors. That is image. That is the name of the game. It's not necessarily about planes of motion, like sagittal, frontal, transverse. We've been talking about that for about two decades. For us, the concept, we recognize it, but for us, has become totally obsolete. Okay. And you're gonna pull, when you pull, when you push, that push, always gonna be, always gonna be 90 to the bar, okay. always, okay. okay? So, you know you're doing 90 when you keep your, uh, your hand open, okay. and then I'll, you know that you're doing the right way. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right. Oh, you have to do that again. Do it again, that's, that's badass. Do it again. Pivot, 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 perfect. So where do you feel the shark bite? Do you feel yeah, it? It goes from here and then into Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what we call the shark bite. Okay. Cool. Right, right there. That's great. So, again, one of the things that we, um, we also believe, Brandon, is the concept of uh, yin-yang mm -hmm. or, or symmetry uh, or working opposite forces. In other words, if we perform a movement in this direction uh, or facing away from the cable machine, mm -hmm. the question is, what is the opposite? The opposite is facing the cable machine, mm -hmm. okay? And go this way, we call it flat, reverse flat pole, okay? Yeah. The grip is the same, see? I don't change the grip. Okay. okay? My stance is more of a throwing stance, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, Right-handed throwing stance. And then from here, I'm gonna do the same concept, but this time, I'm gonna reverse my push and pull. I'm gonna push with my right, pull with my left by leaning back and swing the, arm, uh, the bar over my right shoulder. And then back. I can stop right here and repeat. I can progress it 
by following through. So notice that what I do, Brandon, I depict his diagonal orbit. What we're doing is we're working, we're strengthening the accelerating component of the gold swing and the decelerating component of the gold swing. It is that simple. Yes. Now all you have to do, Brandon, is in your mind, you're gonna you're gonna uh, swing the bar up and over your right shoulder, and it's an orbit. It's, it's, think about circle right there. Now you're gonna go circle, up, up. Keep your eyes right there. Yes. Now you see what you did? Yeah. You you broke the bar horizontal. Okay. Think circle. That's it. Now bring it down. Follow through. Follow through. Follow through. Follow through. Push. There you go. Perfect. Go up again. Think circle. When you when you uh, swing the bar up, shift the weight to the back foot. Okay. Now you shift the weight to the front foot. Now you're gonna switch. You shift the weight to the right. Yes, that's it. Real wide, huh? There you go. Perfect. Great. Perfect. So those are examples of movements. Yeah, that, oh, that, that you can really feel. I mean, I can really feel. That's like that's a bite for sure. The, the angle of the orbit, the angle of the orbit that you are strengthening, dictate the muscle fibers mm -hmm. of your core that you're gonna be working. But see, it's not just your core. You, I mean, your core cannot do it by itself. It needs your upper extremity and your lower extremity. Upper extremity for steering, and lower extremity for base. The concept is the same. The movement come from you know baseball he, uh, hitting the golf swing uh, a racket sir they all come from the same family the family the family of throwing yeah. okay so follow me follow me here okay. and I will explain to you uh, uh, with a better with the, with graphics of what I'm talking about so when it's come to to a rotational strength development we we no longer look at the transverse uh, plane of motion okay it's a it's, it's a good concept but it doesn't tell the whole story so this is how we see uh, trunk strength development so we talk about for example the vertical orbit uh -huh. the vertical orbit is the only orbit where the push pull does not apply think about a sit-up what am I looking at here is that the spine or no this is just an orbit okay don't worry about the body yep. this is just an orbit it's right here he's doing a sit-up okay it's flexing my hip it's doing a leg raise Okay, it's doing an RDL with dumbbell, for example. Okay, that is the vertical orbit, but it's the only one that there's no. It's either push or pull, but there's not. It's not both. Right. It's not. It's not simultaneous. It's not simultaneous. Yeah. There's no rotation. Okay, but I mean, it, it's an orbit this way, but it's, there's no rotation like the way we know it. The right. push pull. Yeah. Now, the other orbit that we train is what we call the horizontal orbit, right here. So, typical horizontal rotational movement, choppers. We all know that, okay? So just to give you an example, right here, these choppers here, and we use specific tools to engage this movement, right here or right here. Choppers really have its roots in martial arts, you know, and uh, like karate or, or uh, uh, Shaolin, you know, some of those uh, ancient uh, way of uh, martial arts. So, the other, orbits are what we call the diagonal orbit and they're just a mirror image the diagonal orbit is the throwing orbit mm -hmm. okay this is what this is what is this is the requirement for a tennis serve a volleyball spike uh, a pitcher in baseball throwing okay these are uh, hitting hitting golf part of it yeah. is diagonal but the other orbit that the ghost swing really play a big role is what we call the lateral this one right here and that is the flagpole that I did at the beginning the flagpole yeah. and the reverse, never see workouts the flagpole and yeah. the reverse flagpole what it does is I, that those two those two movements all I'm doing is I'm meeting the requirement I mean the requirement of the gold swing, of the lateral orbit and the diagonal orbit, either if you're left side or right side, doesn't matter. Now, 
a, a good or great golf strength and conditioning program doesn't stop there. Just because you meet the requirement doesn't mean that it's enough. No, you need to exceed the requirement by training the orbits that complement the other three so you make, to, to make sure that there's no gaps. You cover all the gaps. There's no leaks. Mm -hmm. And notice that this concept, and I'm just talking to you, this is just a glimpse yeah. of the whole method. Yeah. But the whole idea is to leave no gaps. So when you do it this way, the movements that we do are, you know, we, we like to call it, you know, we like to say that they are like their family, their relatives, they're related, their brothers, sisters, their cousins. Right. They're all related. So as opposed to the conventional uh, model out there where movement, for example, they have bodybuilding movement, weightlifting movement, gymnastic movement, and we try to take those movement and force it into program. Okay. And those are all related movements. And that method usually brings gaps because they're not related. Right, right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. All right, where can people learn more about, about either, uh, about all these different accessories and more about Pure Motion? Brandon, the best way is puremotion.net. Uh, and I suggest also to visit our Instagram account. That is being, we add content every day, every day. We also have a YouTube channel, but puremotion.net is a great way, and Instagram, and social media. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll put a link for that in the description. See you later. Bye.